It is week six of PFR on Lakeshore Public Television. We get you ready for a battle of unbeatens tomorrow night. One will go from three unbeaten teams to two yes. tomorrow night, Wayne. At, and you, we've got some other four and one teams that kind of are a surprise in the area. All right, we'll have that. We'll check in on the uh, check marks record, which is back over 500. All that <laughs> coming up next on PFR. Who is the dark afraid of? His name is Tim. When you report a power outage, Tim and linemen like him respond to the call. Text OUT to 444-111 to report an outage. With your cell phone, when the power's out, power is still in your hands. Support for PFR and PFR Scoreboard is provided by Geminis, partnering for the future. All right, week six of PFR on Lakeshore Public Television. We are ready to go. Ready to look back at week five, Wayne, of, uh, of highlights and uh, a lot of, of great highlights from week yeah. five. A lot of a great games. A big win for Michigan City, and uh, Phil Mason's kind of dominated Merrillville in recent years. Three in yeah. a row with Andrean, and that one last week with Michigan City. Hey, big win for North Newton. When's the last time they were four and one? It was late, like 63? 93, I think. Was I think it 93. 93? Yeah, it's been a long time. Wow. Yeah, that's... That's big time. So we'll see if uh, we'll see if Wheeler gets back on track this week. So don't be picking against them, Wayne. <laughs> All right, time to look back at week five. The highlights on PFR Rewind. Down the yes, far sir. There. Boy, what a nice move, and he's got some good blocking too. Yeah, on that. there's that's no some doubt. Good speed. There was nobody that's catching right. him though. That's right. All right, there was our week five PFR rewind. Now with some players of the week. We start as always with our offensive players of the week, shall we? <laughs> we 
We saw Mr. Kane Vesey as well. Yep, Buck uh, was on the run there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. knocking over guys. Golly. What a night for Patrick Reardon, at yes. the quarterback. Andrean has really played well uh, lately, and he started it with this uh, big night. Um, Ty Lee Rimmer from uh, East Chicago really came on strong and with four TDs. And one of the players that Whiting will be uh, look, trying to keep tabs on, uh, James Lang from Hanover, part of their multiple back offense uh, of, of running, 169 yards or 198 yards and three TDs. So he had an outstanding game as well for undefeated Hanover. Defensive players of the week. You know, this one, uh, Max Seitzinger from uh, North Newton, we don't get many stats from the North Newton games, but this was a big one. They shut out Wheeler, and he had two picks in that game. Yes, he did, and a uh, great shutout against uh, Wheeler as North Newton, as we said, 4-1 and one for the first time since 1993. And Whiting also had a nice uh, shutout against Lake Station. Yeah, Lake Station playing better, and uh, but Whiting is just uh, too big and strong for them. I, like, I think Lake Station is playing better. I think now that you right. mentioned that. That's I right. think they are. All right, how about some uh, <laughs> special teams players of the week? Well, we saw one of them right in that last highlight, uh, Patrick Kelly, 97 yarder. And we saw Jalen Scott He's also. He's been a stud all he season long. He has been a stud, I'll tell you. On the outside, on special teams. Friedrich uh, from Crown Point had a 40 yarder, and Padilla from uh, Whitey had a 38 yard field goal. And of course, the most coveted award in high school football nationwide, the unknown player of the week. Keyshawn McGill from Michigan City. Two catches. Um, I think he had two TDs versus Merrillville. Never heard of him. And uh, Dylan White from Whiting, 92 mm -hmm. yards and two TDs. Sean Schoon of North Newton. Yep. Two Couple field, field goals. goals. And Scott Fisher. And I have heard of Scott Fisher. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have too. Munster. All right, there's our unknown players of the week. They are now famous. Celebrity status has been reached for them on PFR. <laughs> All right, time for the Little Five poll for this week. A little shift in the poll this week. Wow. You know, we've got North Newton, 4-1, uh, and one, Knox, 4-1, and, and South Central is 4-1. and one. Um, Rensselaer, You're three and two, and then Knox a little there. Wheeler comes down to number five. All right. How about the big boy poll? One team noticeably missing there in the little five. Yep. Does that mean they've graduated yes, at least this does. week to the big boy poll? <laughs> yes, well, they'll does. be having to play pretty well tomorrow night to stay in the big boy poll. That's number ten. Hanover Central. Yeah, Hanover Central is playing so very well. Kudos to that team and Pete Koulianis. Um, Crown Point and Andrean, Andrean really had a good game, maybe a wake-up game for them to get back in. Well, they've had a really tough schedule. Merrillville yes. and New Prairie. Right. Uh, a tough loss to Munster. Crown Point's had a, a very difficult schedule as yeah. well. Uh, yeah, Portage uh, had a nice win over Crown Point, even though uh, their defense stepped up, and um, you got Merrillville, uh, Michigan City at number uh, four. Valpo, boy, are they playing well. They and, are. And uh, Whiting is number two, two in the state this week. I think that this is definitely a barometer game for Hanover. I agree with you. Uh, against Whiting. I, I totally mean, agree. They have to measure their football team based on how they play against Whiting. Uh, obviously, conference ramifications as well, but... Uh, got to measure themselves by someone, and on their schedule, that would be Whiting. This is their Super Bowl week. And I don't think there's any doubt, any question who the number one team in the big boy, in the big poll is, and the only poll that matters, and it's the uh, orange and black of Laporte. Boy, their ground game. And then you add Lawrence in with his passing. He doesn't throw much, but he's accurate. But their ground game is just beating people. That offensive is. line is probably the most valuable player in the conference. Yeah, right they've now. worn teams down throughout the game, throughout the season. I mean, Laporte uh, played pretty well with them for a while, was within a score, and then uh, two scores by Laporte late to uh, put that game out of reach. That's right. Lake yeah. Central played well, but uh, you're right. Uh, Laporte just hammers you and hammers you yeah. and hammers you. 
All right, time for a timeout. Don't forget, we'll be live tomorrow night at 1030 for PFR School Board. We'll be right back with our game of the week. For more information on everything prep football, visit us on Facebook or on Twitter at PFR Sports. Our prep football report game of the week will be Whiting versus Hanover Central. Uh, let's say we talk with the coach of the Whiting Oilers, Jeff Kane, joining us on PFR. And my friend, big game between two unbeatens. How big is it? We uh, we try not to put any game as too big, but obviously 5-0 and 5-0 oh and oh going against each other is going to be a big game. I said we try to treat every game just like, uh, you know, like it was in, uh, you know, week 14, week 15. I said this is a big game. It's going to be a big game for both schools, and uh, it should be a fun night. It should be a fun night this Friday. I said the atmosphere should be great. There's a target on your back because you're number two in class two ways, so how bad or good is that for your football program? Uh, it's... it's uh, that doesn't really matter. I think when we come out, I think the score is still going to be 0-0 zero, zero, no matter what the rankings are. Uh, our, our kids have, uh, we've actually been ranked fairly high the last two or three years. And I said, this is, uh, you know, when it, when it first happens, I said, it's kind of a neat deal. I said, right now, I said, yeah, we do realize. I said, we get week in and week out. I said, you get everybody Super Bowl. I said, there's nothing anybody would like better than to beat, you know, the number two team in the state. So, uh, like I said, it should be a fun atmosphere. I said, these guys are... Uh, much improved. I said we uh, have been, you know, have been following them, have been watching them, just simply because I said we've been getting tape from common opponents and, and seeing these guys. And I said they've been uh, doing a number. I said they're scoring a lot of points and they're giving up very few. So should be a good night. What concerns you the most about Hanover Central? Well, they're they're multi-dimensional. Their quarterback is multi-dimensional. I said they can throw the ball a little bit. I said they really want to run the ball with the three kids, the quarterback and the two, uh, the fullback and the uh, the uh, H back that they use. I said they, you know, spread the wealth around. I said they move the ball around, and I said you really better be ready to play. Or I said you'd be in for a long night. I know your quarterback will be ready to play. Class now said himself a pretty good season. Stewart's, Stewart's doing okay. I said uh, this is Stewart's third year starting, so I said he's a. He's a seasoned veteran out there, and I said there's not a whole lot that's going to uh, rattle him as far as uh, Friday night games. I said he, uh, Stewart comes into his own. I said he runs the ball hard. I said, we, you know, he, when, when we need him to, I said he's thrown the ball very well this year. So Thanks for the time. We appreciate you. Thanks. All righty. That's Jeff Kane, the head coach of the Whining Oilers. It's time now to exit stage left and head to Hanover Central. As promised, we're in Hanover Central right now to take a look at the other side of the Whiting versus Hanover Central matchup. Pete Culianos, the head coach of the Hanover Central football team, is here. And how did you guys get so good in such a short amount of time? Well, I think uh, we've been blessed in that we have some decent athletes, and uh, it's been kind of a, a longer process than I think people realize. It's been, these kids started playing when they were in seventh and eighth grade, so they've had some football experience, and most of these kids, when we started the high school, uh, were playing as freshmen. Um, and sophomores so there's quite a bit of experience here and it was just a matter of us trying to um, corral that talent and, and get it moving all in the right direction. I'm sure you've seen tape of Whiting by now. What is your biggest concern? Uh, our biggest concern is their run game. I mean they are so physical. Um, they don't put the ball on the ground at all and it's going to be a challenge for our defense um, to stop that run game. Now for people who are saying why is it that Hanover Central is so good this year? Let's do some name dropping. Talk about some of the guys that have helped your football team become so good this year? Sure. Uh, offensively, we have uh, Dustin Lindley, a running back. Um, he's got uh, 460 some yards of rushing. Uh, James Lang, our quarterback, who's a first year 
starter has come along nicely. Um, he's at 666 rushing. And then obviously we've got a very stellar defense with uh, Jordan Andrade and um, David Kruger leading the way on, on the defensive side of the ball. Now you being a quote small school unquote, how do you enjoy this attention? Oh, I mean, you know, anytime that we can get some recognition uh, aside from the Laports and the Lake Central, it's always really nice. Um, I think we play kind of an exciting brand of football uh, in our conference and, and the, the teams that, that we face are really well coached. Um, and so I think uh, you'll see pretty quality wise, you'll see you'll see football similar to what you see at the bigger schools. Just uh, our biggest issue is, is lack of depth at spots. Whiting has big game experience. Your boys obviously don't quite have the same type experience. How much of a factor will that play in Friday's game? Well, I think uh, I think it'll play a role. I think uh, as long as our kids can can hold their their thoughts together and maintain their composure, I think that uh, uh, we'll be okay. But you know, as you well know, in big games, there's always swings, and I think it's going to come down to how well our kids handle the good with the bad and not getting too high and too low. Welcome to prime time, partner. Well, thank you so much. All righty, that's it. Joe Wayne, who you got? Well, I think. Coach hit it right on the on the head there with his first comment. Will Hanover be able to physically play with Whiting along right. the line of scrimmage? That's right. that's what's got to be answered. They, they weren't able to do that last year, but will they be able to be more competitive along the line of scrimmage this year? That's that's what this game basically comes down to, I think. I think so too, because uh, you have two good quarterbacks delaying for Hanover Central. You've got two and um, uh, Glasgow for uh, Whiting. Um, and you've got a running game for Hanover that is doing an excellent job. Um, now it's just the, can Hanover actually score against Whiting's defense, and uh, can Whiting's defense rise up? And you know that, that's the the line of scrimmage is really what is going to be. And I, and I really like what he said at the end there. Is, was, how are they going to handle the highs and right. the lows of the game? Right. They, as you know, that's big. Are you going to be? Big. Are you going to continue to play after? Because bad things are going to happen. Right. Uh, are you going to continue to play at that level uh, when bad things do happen and continue to play for the entire night and not get down? That, that's, I think, big. I think that this is Hanover Super Bowl. I really do. Uh, not that if they lose it, uh, their season's over. But I, I think that, the, you know, this is a statement game, like you said. You've got two coaches. Um, you know, Jeff Kane has been there. He's had a lot of success. Um, state runner-up. State runner-up. And Pete does an outstanding job at Hanover Central. Pete Kulianis, and uh, well, you know, he's and, got those kids playing and very well. Pete's been around. He's seen a lot of things. He's had big school experience. Yes, he has. Uh, so, I mean, even though he threw a little jab at Lake Central there. <laughs> <laughs> the Lake Central's in the boards? <laughs> okay, Pete. <laughs> We're just teasing, Coach. Yeah. All right. Let's see it, Wayner. What do you think about the game of the night? I think your pick's coming up yep, if I, uh, it's coming if up. I follow Should the uh, script correctly. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I did, maybe I don't. I don't know. I did. Yeah, here's the records first. Oh, the records are yes. first. I'm sorry. I and didn't. look at that check mark, uh, over 50%. Gosh. Well, to no surprise, the check mark <laughs> is over 50% 50, 50 <laughs> where it's supposed to be. Wayne mm -hmm. at uh, 63%. We're creeping up slowly. Still 64%. <laughs> he is supposed to be at 70 or higher. And of 90. course, and, should be 90. and not there yet, <laughs> but hey, the red check mark is. All right. Time. I believe now it's time to put the hat on. It's time for <laughs> Wayne's World. World. All right. All right. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. You continue to try to. Holes. You continue to try to bait me to take some games. <laughs> I, I, I do, and you I, just. I, I, I geez, don't. I'm fall. a terrible fisherman. I guess. I, I, yes, you are. <laughs> I don't fall for that trick. Okay, you like City over LC. I like City over LC. They played a great game last week against Merrillville, and I like Portage over Chesterton, even though it's at Chesterton. Uh, Portage really has surprised people throughout the year. Credit to Darren Rodriguez over there at Portage. Definitely. I think that they've had a heck of a year, you know, so far Portage has. And um, I don't think, have they beaten Chesterton in a while? I don't know. I think uh, it, maybe no, I don't think so. Maybe I, it's been a little it's while. It's been a little while for that, that one. Um, we've got uh, Other Mar big game of the night could be uh, Maryville and Laporte. That's right. Maryville and Laporte. Um, 
I like Laporte because it's at Laporte. I think the Laporte's offense uh, we can grind it out against the Maryville. Maryville, if they can not turn the ball over, which they have in the past here, they could upset the Laporte right there. That'd be a big, big upset in the Doolin. Maryville was run on defensively last week by Michigan City. They're going to have to tighten that up. Yes, they really are. On the road, Laporte. or Laporte's going right. to put some numbers up. I like Velpo over Crown Point, even though Crown Point's defense is still playing fairly well. But uh, Velpo, boy, they have really surprised me also. They playing pretty well. They've, yes, their they offense have. has found some consistency, some identity. How about the Northwest Crossroads? Well, hey, right Grant's off, coming, Lane. Boy, they're coming. They had You're some right. signs against Munster. They played really well last week against Hobart. Can they keep that momentum going? Well, I really think that this Reardon young man, the quarterback, has played very well the last couple of well, weeks. He, 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 he was he was incomplete on one pass last week. I mean, Just I don't one. know. He's gonna have to step it up a little bit. He was what was he, thirteen for fourteen? Yeah, I mean, yep. come on. I think that Until was Until he's hundred percent throwing the ball, I don't know how much credit he should really get. I'm kidding, of course, but uh, yeah, Reardon was outstanding. And then thirteen you've got, of fourteen. And then you've got Hobart at Lowell. This is a big game for both teams. Can it is. Hobart bounce back from a you know, a really not very well executed game plan against uh, Andrean, and can Lowell continue to, you know, rise here? And at Griffith and Munster. Yes, that's another one in there. I'm surprised you didn't pick the Lowell uh, game as a <laughs> check mark. Darn, I, I put it right out there for you. Uh, Munster yes. and Griffith, uh, I think Munster really is uh, right now playing fairly well, and, and it's gonna be a tough one at Munster. KV over Hammond. And I like the way East Chicago is playing. Could be the Great Lakes Conference Championship game there right with there. East Chicago and Morton. Right there. I like the cards as well. The Great Lakes, uh, Rensselaer, too powerful for Clark, and uh, Gavitt, too powerful for um, Westside. Oh, yes. It's still no check mark, Wayne. I know. I, I can't. <laughs> what is this? Um, Lake Station is at the new Calumet football field. I don't know if the you know, new field will do anything for Calumet or not. It could. But I'm picking them. Okay. And I like uh, River over Noel. All right. The check mark's got to come out sometime. There Ooh. it is. Ooh. <laughs> the station. I give you another one. I give you another gotta one. Got to like that. that. Coach Hudak's <laughs> ball club. Uh, y Lake Station, they're playing some good football. Got two wins already on the season. They've beaten Calumet uh, in two of the last uh, – the last, uh, I think, two in a row, actually. Yeah. They've beaten a, a Calumet, so they've got some confidence against Calumet. Uh, the new first home game could be good, could be yes, bad. You that's know, right. Could you be folk too excited, over overexcited, and uh, make some mistakes? This, this is, you know, i got to pick two games. Yep. So, like, sure. Lake Station is one of my chances, I think. You pass on the low one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, um, North Newton over Boone. I do. I, North Newton. Boy, what a go those guys are playing very well. Four and one on the season. Boone struggling a little bit. This is going to be a good game. It's South Central over Wheeler. South Central like four and one. All right. And uh, it's there at Wheeler. Okay, I knew that check mark was coming up for this one. <laughs> you got to look the Bearcats to bounce back after that tough North Newton loss. I'm sure they've been a little more focused in practice this week. This well, is a big. Be. <laughs> this is a big rivalry game. Yes, Klimzak's got ties to South That's Central. Right. Klimzak's got ties to Wheeler. Uh, you know, it's a big rivalry game, and the Bearcats uh, have won two in a row in this series, so this is a special game for them to continue that winning streak against South Central. Ah, the check mark likes Wheeler to bounce back and get a W. Well, you know, like you said, it's a big rivalry game, so anything could happen. Yes. And uh, South Central's playing well. All right, elsewhere, you like the Jays. I do. I like... Uh, well, this is a well. Yes, I like the Jays over West Central, Knox over Culver. Now you, Culver's pretty good. You're finally respecting Knox. Yeah, and uh, Heritage uh, Christian is just a little bit out of Bowman's class. And in the big one, our game of the night. There it is. I like uh, Whiting at home. To no surprise. This is <laughs> a big one. To no for surprise, both you stayed with the chalk, Wayne. <laughs> um. Again, I think Hanover's got a. I know this. How competitive will they be? Yes. Winning could, you know, winning could be huge for them this game. Oh, it could be but, huge. But, but 
it's not the beat all end all. If no, they play toe to toe with Whiting, I think that's a major step for their program. I totally agree with you. I totally agree. I think that uh, if they show and represent themselves well on Friday night, um, you know, this is going to be a big boost for their confidence. I think so. You know, whether they win or lose, you know. Because conference you, championships are one thing, but yes. postseason is another. Oh, definitely. And you definitely want to play well in postseason, try to win a trophy with a sectional championship. But so, uh, confidence. Hanover is a little bit like Griffith. Griffith trying to come back, trying right. to gradually build. Hanover trying to build their program as well. And uh, getting a lot of airtime on PFR, I want to point out to all those uh, Hanover fans. Hanover fans, fans getting that's a right. lot of airtime <laughs> on PFR. All right, we'll see you tomorrow night live at 1030 PFR School Board on Lakeshore Public Television. Who is the dark afraid of? His name is Tim. When you report a power outage, Tim and linemen like him respond to the call. Text OUT to 444-111 to report an outage. With your cell phone, when the power's out, power is still in your hands. Support for PFR and PFR Scoreboard is provided by Geminis, partnering for the future. Captioning for PFR and PFR Scoreboard is provided by Voice to Print Captioning, LLC. Wardrobe for PFR and PFR Scoreboard provided by Gosser Corporate Sales Incorporated. Custom embroidery, screen, and digital printing. Further support provided by Fahrenheit 212 Restaurant and Bar.